October is a, a certainly a busy month for us. We spend uh, almost the entire month of October doing fire safety for the public. October is Fire Prevention Month and the Moore Fire Department is hitting the street to make people aware of fire hazards. We'll share a few of their tips and later. We want the attic temperature to be as close to that outside temperature as possible. Let's see what the temperature is in this attic. Is your home a penny pincher or a cash flusher? We'll talk with the experts about simple ways to save a bundle on utility bills this winter. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Sewer backups can wreak havoc on your home, but there are several important facts that can help. First up, make sure your homeowner's insurance policy covers damage from a sewer backup. Even if a backup is due to a blocked city main, the city may not be allowed to pay for damages. Under state law, cities are liable for sewer main backup damage only if there has been prior notice and time to fix the problem. Although city crews can help clean up the immediate mess, homeowners, not the city, must pay for replacing carpets, furniture, and repairs. Having coverage included in your homeowner's policy will make a big difference. You should also install a check valve. This simple device keeps wastewater from flowing back up your private line into your home. Call the city if you have signs of a developing blockage. Signs include slow draining sinks, wastewater backflow, and continuous sewage smell in your home. If you're seeing these signs, call the city 24 hours a day. If there's a problem with the city line, they should be able to fix it before sewage backs up into your house. If your private line is blocked, they'll tell you so you can get it fixed. Improvements to the city's sanitary sewer system have reduced backups considerably in recent years. That doesn't mean much, however, if it happens in your house. If you have questions or concerns about sewage backup, call 793-5080. Does that kind of sound like Darth Vader a little bit? This, kind of, this is where some of those little kids get scared sometimes, okay? These kids at Broadmoor Elementary School and more are getting a first-hand look at what they might see if a firefighter had to rescue them from a burning home. So I'm going to crawl in. I'm going to get to your door. I'm going to say, hey, is there anybody in there? What are you guys going to say? I want you to yell as loud as you can. Hey, I'm over here. I'm over here. So that's pretty much it. We're going to come and get you out. In fact, this class is one of many and more learning the ins and outs of fire safety throughout the month of October. October is said every day, multiple presentations every day throughout the month of October, which is great. I mean, it, it makes the community aware, makes the kids aware of how important it is for fire prevention. So it's just like a whole month of solid fire prevention. You need to make sure that you have a smoke detector and that you know what it sounds like. And the last thing I'd say about these is we have a program in the city of Moore. If you guys live around here and you, have a, and you live in a house or trailer or apartment that does not have one of these, you need to get in touch with me or with uh, Fire Marshal Crane or one of the people at the fire department and we'll get you a smoke detector for nothing, for free, okay? Because we don't want any one of you guys living in a house that does not have a smoke detector, okay? Kids are usually very excited to see us. Um, we, we try and take some good training tools with us, things to show them, some things they can put their hands on and, and learn with. And then also we like to take the big red fire truck and that really gets them excited. So we like to educate them a little bit in the classroom, try and keep their attention and let them go outside and have fun on the fire truck. Uh, your scissors will cut paper. Our scissors will cut cars. While kids enjoy having the big red fire truck pull up at their school for a tour, elementary schools aren't the only groups that can take advantage of fire safety training. Senior citizen groups, business organizations, or virtually any group, older, younger, or in between, can benefit from fire safety training. And there's no fee to arrange a presentation. Our biggest goal is to educate the community about fire prevention, life safety tactics, on things they can do to be safe and make good decisions. 
So what do fire officials tell groups about fire safety and making good decisions? At the very top of the list is making sure your home has a smoke detector. Smoke detector can mean a matter of, uh, of getting out safely or, or the difference of a fatality in a home in a, in a fire. Um, especially if it's in the nighttime when everybody's asleep and it could be the only thing that saves a family's life to hear the smoke detector wake them up and to get out of the house safely. Other tips include having an evacuation plan for your family and a meeting place outside the home where everyone can check in. Keeping bedroom doors closed at night to slow the spread of smoke and fire. Have your chimney cleaned yearly before using your fireplace to avoid a chimney fire. Try to avoid the use of candles and if you do use them, be extra cautious about where you place them and make sure they're extinguished when you're done. Try to avoid smoking inside and make sure butts are fully out. Never extinguish a grease fire with water, instead smother it with a lid. And finally, be extra cautious with the use of space heaters in the winter. Make sure they're level and on a non-flammable surface. And when it comes to your kids, if you discover them experimenting with matches or lighters, feel free to make an appointment with the fire marshal. We try to do it in a, uh, in a nice setting where they don't feel like they're in trouble. We try to do it in, uh, as, to, to teach them why they shouldn't be playing with matches and lighters. And yeah, we see a light bulb come on when they're at the fire station and they're talking to one of us and we're telling them the dangers of it and it kind of put it in perspective of what could happen. To schedule a station tour, seminar, or for more information about fire safety, call the Moore Fire Department at 793 Five one one zero. Oh, it's hot. <laughs> Substantial progress is now visible on the new public safety center being constructed in Old Town Moor. A rotunda entryway is clearly visible providing a good feel for the shape of the building. You can also see the emergency management section of the building that is especially protected with thick cement walls to survive a tornado. The overall building will house the Moore Police Department, Municipal Courts, and the Moore Emergency Management Center. It's expected to be completed in 2014. You may not realize it, but your home can actually be a source of penny pinching or money flushing. Tiny details in places you may never expect can be the source of tremendous savings or not. Take a look here at what's starting around the window. This is the caulking. Can you see these gaps and cracks and separation? When we see that, that means that we're getting cold air and moisture and dampness back in there. It's time to recalk, and that makes a difference in our energy costs. Jack Warner is a home inspector and a leader within state home inspection associations. Every day he finds little things in people's homes that are costing them big time. One of the first places he starts is the attic. If it's 66 degrees outside, like a reading we got here, ideally we'd like it to be 66 degrees in the attic, okay? if it's 10 degrees outside, we'd like it to be 10 degrees in the attic. I really don't want to see plastic over the turbine vents in the wintertime and all those things. I want great ventilation year round and great insulation. In this particular home, that wasn't the case. Guys, as we take a reading in the attic here, I'm getting 94, 93, up to 96 degrees in different spots. We've got about a 30 degree difference and the point is, once we get 20 or more, we know our attic is not operating as efficiently as it could or should. 
According to Jack, the home needs more soffit vents to provide better ventilation. He also recommends 14 inches of insulation for maximum efficiency. Most home improvement stores and more can help you select the appropriate type of insulation and even assist with installation. I re-insulated my attic. I brought it up to what are the new recommended standards and I easily paid for my insulation cost within the first winter that I had it. So in many cases we're talking about during the coldest part of the winter, we're talking about 30 and 40 dollars a month that we're going to save in uh, your energy costs. Not to mention your house is also more comfortable now. But I can see daylight through there all the way across and that means that we're paying I'll bet you this is a, a 10 or $15 loss a month easily because when it's really hot outside and you're cranking up that air or it's really cold outside, we're working hard to heat and cool that garage. Weather stripping isn't expensive and is well worth the investment. Taking a good hard look at your windows may not be a bad idea either, especially in older homes. Low E windows like, like we're showing here have a gas inside of them which traps the heat in the winter time and traps the heat outside in the summertime. So a low E window such as this one along with vinyl clad, uh, a vinyl clad window will prevent heat from transferring from the inside to the outside and also keep the cold uh, on the outside of your house in the winter. Water loss is also an area that will cost you, especially a running toilet. Nine times out of ten it will be a stool. Your, your older style stools will have the chain that hangs down, get hung up, or won't seal. The little rubber seals that is on the flappers, they need to be replaced. About every five years is what they recommend. And they'll just seep water out. And finally, they'll start running water. Flappers aren't expensive and can be replaced easily. There are even new products that are replacing the old chain and ball system altogether. So to bring your toilet into the 21st century, we do have products like this. This replaces the traditional float valve that you see in most older toilets. You're now going to set your water level on this device and this removes the possibility of a float getting stuck inside of your toilet and creating a large water bill where it continually filled your toilet and it just continued to run all day long. And a toilet running all day long can be a big problem for your pocketbook. If that ran over time of a three month period, that's actually close to 300,000 gallons, which is quite a bit. At $3 per thousand, that's, that's a pretty good chunk of change. Back outside the house, issues with cracked caulking are leading to more energy losses. Look carefully, if you can. Can you see where this was caulked and sealed? And Some of the wood is split, but look at where that's separated. That means wind and cold and ice and snow and moisture is getting back in there. All of that, every single one of these, it has cracked caulking or split wood where the, the dampness can get back in there. That seeps through and it impacts how much that utility bill we get every month cost us. Then there's light bulbs. The type of bulb you choose can make a dramatic difference in your electric bill over time. I have EVE lights that point down on the ground around the side of my house. I have 10 of them. I replaced all of my incandescent bulbs, which were 45 watts, with LED bulbs. I immediately, just in one month, I saw an $18 reduction in cost just associated with those lights outside. That's $18 in one month. It easily paid for my bulbs by the end of the year. The trend is pretty clear. Little changes around your home can make a big difference in how much you spend in utility bills. Experts say autumn is an ideal time to assess your home and make these type of changes before old man winter comes knocking.